Hi everyone, this is Tiffany and today I'd like to talk to you about the National Institutes of Health um, post back Research Program. And this program is typically a one to two year program during which post backs or people who have graduated from undergrad are able to do full-time research at the National Institutes of Health. Generally, that's at the main campus, which is in Bethesda, Maryland, which is close to DC. So you're able to explore DC area while you're working at the NIH. And so this is a great option for people who are looking for some time between um, the end of their um, po the end of their undergraduate career and the beginning of their professional um, education career, such as medical school or PhD programs, or just for people who want to figure out if research is right for them. And so, personally, for me, I did the postdoc program for two years, and I will be entering um, osteopathic medical school at the end of this month. And so, I just wanted to make a video that explains the application process and what it's like being a post and the benefits of that, um, as well as some tips I have about um, just overall anything I can uh, tell you guys from my experience. So for the application process, it was a little different from what I did with other um, post programs I applied to. So for the NIH um, post program, what you do is you submit an application, but rather than being reviewed by edit, uh, an application committee that tells you if you're accepted or not, individual labs will pull from the thousands of applications and then ask for interviews um, on their own. And so there's no set time, but generally most people apply to begin um, during the summer. And if you want to start during the summer, generally people have submitted their applications by the end of the previous year, so around um, November or December. That way you give yourself ample time to be um, picked out of the pool of applicants. And from there you are offered an interview by the individual lab and hopefully you do well in that <laughs> and then you get accepted. So um, some tips I have about that is definitely apply early and definitely have um, your letters of recommendation reflect your abilities to do research. So ideally that would mean a PI of a lab that you've worked in during your undergrad or during summers, something like that, um, who can talk about what you're like in a lab setting. And so at least for my lab, that's what they were looking for the most, which is um, research experience and letters of recommendation about what you're like in the lab. And your personal statement should also reflect how interested you are in research and how knowledgeable you are about the process of research, how it's not just um, an amazing experience every day, but your ability to look past the mundane things and to see the bigger picture so that you're staying motivated for the one to two years that you end up working in that lab. And Another tip is not just submitting your application, but also reaching out to labs. So labs have the ability to look at the pool of applicants, which is thousands of applications, and filtering through um, GPA, through undergraduate institution, through research interests, through years of research experience. And so one of the things that is very important is to stand out from the thousands of applications, um, you should email labs. It's not well publicized which labs are in particular are looking for um, post box. So that's why it's important to email a lot of labs you're interested in. But make sure your email reflects that you've read about the lab and that you're interested in their specific lab. Don't just send a generic email because that will not be taken that seriously. And another thing is um, when you're submitting your application, make sure that when they ask for three categories of research areas you're interested in, to put general areas. I know that there's there's very specific areas of research, such as circadian rhythms or things like that. And while the labs that are in circadian rhythms would be very interested in you if you pick that, um, there are very few labs that do that. So you want to pick things like immunology that are more broad, that way other more labs will be able to filter for your application.
And during the interview, you want to be very knowledgeable about your own research experience as well as um, inquisitive about the research that is being done in the lab that's interviewing you. So you don't have to read every single paper that's been published by that lab, but you definitely want to browse through the papers, look at the abstracts, and form maybe two or three questions that will show that you're interested in the lab. And definitely be open and honest. Um, don't make up things that you don't know about their research. They may ask you about something and if you lie, it looks really bad. So it's okay to say you don't know. Um, but definitely um, make sure that you indicate that you will definitely make the effort to better understand their research when you work with them. And when it comes to choosing a lab, hopefully you will have many offers. Um, you, there are several things to consider. So something that's not publicized on the NIH website um, is that National Cancer Institute, which is the institute I worked at, um, gets paid approximately 10% more if you're a postdoc in the NCI, National Cancer Institute, versus other institutes at the NIH. And so if that's a concern for you because postdoc salary isn't that much, um, definitely look into that. Um, another thing that's very important is that not all labs at the NIH are great work environments for postdocs. And a way to filter out the labs that aren't as good for you is to talk with people who are currently postdocs in the lab or people who have been postdocs in the lab. So if there's no one to talk to who currently works in the lab, definitely ask your interviewer for the contact information of previous postdocs because they will have the best um, perspective and most informative perspective for you to make your decision on whether a lab is right for you or not. Because there's some labs that will require um, different skill sets, for example, different day-to-day -day work that may fit you better, or even there are some labs that have PIs that are very emotional and unprofessional versus labs in which the PIs are very professional and very respectful. So it will not be publicized, but if you dig deeper and definitely talk to previous postbacks, it will be very helpful for you. And once you're in, there are several um, benefits. So um, first of all, your work environment highly depends on your lab, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but generally at the NIH, I think most labs are great. Um, it's just a matter of picking out um, and making sure to avoid the, um, the less helpful labs. <laughs> um, so benefits. There's an office called the OIT office which stands for the Office of Intramural Training and Education. And what they do is they help um, postbacs with all sorts of um, postback concerns. So for example, they help with um, reading your personal statements for um, applying to medical school or any other um, professional school or um, graduate programs. And um, additionally, another benefit is that you get a letter of rec from your PI at the NIH for your professional or graduate programs you want to apply to if you've worked with them for a while before the application process. And another program that is offered is the NIH Academy. So the NIH Academy is a postback program um, during which postbacks meet weekly for maybe, I don't remember how many months, maybe like eight months or so. Um, where postbacs learn about health disparities, specifically in the DC area. Um, they're able to do community outreach projects. And if you apply specifically to be a fellow of the NIH Academy, you will work with a small group of NIH fellows who will um, make their own outreach projects. And you'll present on that at the end of the program. And so I would highly recommend the NIH Academy because it opens your eyes to a lot of health disparity issues, but also it allows you to socialize with postbacs because it's hard to meet with postbacs um, in general because the social the postbox social committee doesn't really have a budget, so generally um, it's harder for them to think of creative ways to meet up. Um, to create meetups with postbacs besides happy hours. Um, so the NH Academy allows you to gain social interactions with postbacs on a weekly basis, and that helps to build um, social relationships. And definitely 
social life is very important at the NIH because you don't want to just be working in a lab all the time. Um, you want to be able to explore DC. People are coming from all around the country and they will want to socialize too. And so my advice on that is to definitely go to the social programs that happen um, during the summer because that's when a lot of post backs will be starting. And from there, definitely um, make an effort to get contact information of po other postbacks and um, meet them for lunch, things like that. And that would be very helpful, especially during the summer before people have been um, involved in social activities that make them um, become less interested in meeting new friends. And so those are all my tips for um, the postbac program. But let me know if there's any questions you have and I'll definitely answer them in the comments below. Thanks.